really in, in his dark. Are you sure? Yes. Sir. Yes. What does that mean? One at a time. What does it mean? What does it mean? Well, that means that um, we're going to be just like you. And, and no one is better than we are. You see, yeah. what, what's the, what, 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 let's, let's evaluate what she just said. She said, what, did you, you, you hear what she just said? Say it one more time, thank you. But, uh, no one is better. No one is better than us. Okay. We're not better than us. Okay. Okay. So she said. That's more superiority. Okay. Y'all hear that? What do you think about that? What do you think about that, Dave? Well, see, to me, when you say when you ask me the question, am I created in the image of God? I'm seeing all things of what God is in me. Okay. I'm in his image. Okay. You know, what, what uh, in the image of God, when you're looking at me, okay. you know, it's the spirit of God inside of me that caused me, you know, to be uh, what I am. Not on the outside of the spirit, but on the inside of the spirit. But as you relate to us, what does that mean to be created? He's given us his What do you think? Uh, well, what I think is if I, uh, uh, I'm created in God, it's the, in the image of God. The image of God. Okay. Relating to people, I can be more loving because the spirit of love is within me. Okay. And I can have patience with people because the spirit of patience is within me. Okay. Now you have to come to grip with that. So you, you need to sit down and think about that. You, that's what I'm talking about. You need to think. Now, I've said that a thousand times. Almost every time I get together, I say it on purpose. Because I understand people in the urban context have to understand because of our experience. We need something to help to reaffirm us. Help us to raise our self-esteem. Okay? Our self-image. We need that. Day in and day out, we need something bigger than the world that we're in to reaffirm us and give us value and give us work. Now we say that, that's really why you got to start the thinking uh, top. You got to ask, uh, you got to start asking questions too. You got to start asking, you got to start saying, well, what does that mean? And then what you're going to have to do, sometimes better than, rather than keep asking questions to, to, to me all the time, you need to go do some research. You need to go study. You start to pull it out from it. You just leave here with some question in the back of your mind. You know what? I'm going to find this out. I'm going to learn more about this this week. Yeah. I have to say something here. It might be. Now, in the process, then we might come back and have a conversation about something that you've learned, something you think, and so forth. But then we'll usually put some, some thought to this stuff. But let me tell you what. what I, and that's good, Tanya. Thank you for sharing that with me. But one thing I didn't, one thing that I, I picked up immediately when Tanya spoke, and uh, she, she, she said, uh, we will be perfected. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's good, in which it's in truth. It? But, but that's kind of like, uh, like what the Eurocentric theologian wants you to believe. Mm -hmm. uh, they want you to always got your eyes on the future, which, you, which is no. good. Right. But what about what's, what's happening in your experience right, right. now? Mm -hmm. Now, this is what I... To be... One thing about God is that to, to create the image of God means mean that you'll be free. You're free. Mm -hmm. Liberty. God's spirit is, is freedom and liberty. Now, I read, I said that I'm thinking about our context. Uh, freedom. Now, what is one of the things that we deal with more than anything as a people is oppression. Yeah. Now, if you're free, if God's image is in you, guess what's going to happen in your spirit? You're going to rebel against anything that oppress you. I don't care. That's the reason why. Yeah. That's why when a, if it's an individual or an institution or a community that oppress you, it's something inside of you that says, no, that ain't right. Yeah. If you have the spirit of God in you, yeah. right. if you recognize that, that yeah. consciousness. Yeah. So it's something in, inside of you resists anything that mars the image of God in you. 
Yes. Yes. Right. yes. That's right. That's when y'all got those, y'all women got those dominating husbands that want to dominate you. Something inside you won't let it happen. You, you right. get it. And when you got a man, got a woman that's going to dominate him. Uh uh-uh. uh. There's something inside that won't let it happen. There's something inside of them. They might not even explain it, but just that image of God, that Imago Day, that's right. inside of you. That resisting anything that marred them to God. And see, to be free is to be human. Right. And to be oppressed and enslaved is to be inhuman or subhuman. Mm-hmm. You got me? You follow me? Yes. And so to be free is to be human, to be human to be free. Mm-hmm. And so anytime people are not free to express themselves and be created, that's another point about mm-hmm. God. See? God created us to be what? Created. Yeah, yeah. And once a person gets and this image of God is, is, is being realized in a person, they, they begin to do things. They become a little bit more proactive, creative, free. Mm-hmm. Image of God suggests to us that anything that's unlike God is that we are against it. It's something inside of you that tells you that no, that's not right. Mm-hmm. That's why that's that's why the system that we live in is so destructive. Men profess to love God and and attack the image of God yeah. in that person wow. by creating an environment so wow. men can't live with it. Yeah. Okay. Y'all don't follow. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yes, sir. That's another argument too. Yeah. And that's a universal principle, yeah. in my opinion. And that's why it, it doesn't make it right. And that's why a lot of people and people groups all over this earth rebel and start killing folks and whatnot. But deep down inside, for the most part, people realize that uh, they got they all have some kind of dominion, some kind of being dominated. Yeah, that's what that that's what we've been reading uh, uh, Psalm eight. Mm-hmm. What, what God's telling us is about who we are. We created a bit lower than you. Yada, yada, up there, yeah. And we have, he's given us dominion over the various things. And when you take that away from people wow. and take their, then you're taking their humanity away from them. Mm-hmm. And people, people begin to find why that, that uh, you're always going to have, as long as the kingdom of God, outside the kingdom of God, you're always going to have struggle because men, no matter what, they can be black, white, Hispanic, or whatever, don't make any difference. In their sinfulness, they want to have power and authority over other people. Yeah, right. yeah. They're going to dominate. That's, that's, that's what sin does. Sin causes people want to dominate. Now, people, you talk about the people in the, in the, in the, in the, in the world, and like we have a problem with Islam right now, right? The problem with those people is that they feel that the West is exploiting them and taking yeah. what belongs to them away from them. Right. Now, let's just bring it down a little bit lower, and in, in their community, they struggling with their women because their men dominate their women. See? Right. Yeah. So they fighting against something that they practice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, 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 so that's what I want you guys to understand. Create it, and you, and you need to keep thinking that through and processing that and understand that it's okay. If, if I, I want you guys to get, get uh, scary around here. If, you see, there's two parts to preaching a, a, to a good church. There's two things a good church is going to do. A good church has to be priestly, and a good church has to be prophetic. Mm-hmm. Priestly and prophetic. Prophetic. Yeah. And one part that we, 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 get, we do pretty good with the priestly part, often about sacrifice and worship and singing, doing mm-hmm. one another, but, we, but we, in our age we're living in right now, the prophetic part is being left out, and the prophecy part always challenge our sinfulness mm-hmm. yeah. personally and institutionally mm-hmm. and that's what we don't do now we do a pretty good job of dealing with personal sin mm-hmm. if you if you turn your TV go I want you to start listening to TV and uh, since y'all look at TV minutes y'all 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 get more time than you. <laughs> y'all get a lot of y'all time to TV to TV preachers send all your money down there you might work well try to <laughs> evaluate it I said, <laughs> we, we get to we get to change over here, and uh, 
and a boy on television get, get the real money. See? But listen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to start checking that and evaluate and start to watching the heart of their message. Yeah. And that all of the oppression that's going on in our society and around the world, you'll never hear them address it. No. No. You'll never hear them talk about an institution of sin. No. No. Mm-mm. You won't hear it. But you hear them talk about your personal faith. Mm-hmm. Which they need to. But you need a balance in that too. Yeah. You need yeah. you need you need to you need to balance that. And mm-hmm. like right here in South Dallas. And we're working right now, I'm working trying to talk to work with some more guys. Now we need to, I need to come here every week and I need to talk to us about let's get up and get ourselves going. Let's clean ourselves up. Let's become a righteous people. Yeah. And a holy Supposed to be a holy people. But still at the same time, somebody needs, we need to talk about what created this environment out here too. Yes. Mm-hmm. Where people don't have a job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And these young people have this, they start stealing and start selling dope yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And our girls become so promiscuous. I don't have a man that they can they can they can mate with in a legitimate kind of way. You see what I'm saying? So there's there's, there's a lot that goes into creating that kind of an environment. That's right. mm-hmm. And so that's the reason why. We have to deal with both sides of it. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. But that's the justice thing. We got to talk about it on our revival. See, see. We got to work on this thing yes, so we can get this thing together. But in any event, I, I saw you had something you want to say. Tell, tell you, you had something you want to say. Then we're going to move on. Well, I was just going to ask the question. So when you say that uh, we need to work more on the prophetic part, are you talking about things that are going on now that will affect the future? Or um, yeah, the, 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 the prophet, the prophet, there's two parts of prophet. Prophets can, can uh, foretell, that's talking about future things to come. The prophet also talk about the conditions as it is right now. And did, did really is calling for change and repentance. You have to challenge the status quo. And, and uh, you'll never see a preacher that's worth the salt in his bread with his arm around the mayor or the president of the country. Because, see, they are the ones that are giving leadership. And that, see, we have to become the conscious. A good, a good ministry becomes the conscious of the society, not embrace it. We have to be there to challenge the system to be righteous. And be fair and be just right. in his dealing with the with the people. Because the masses of the people are really struggling with life. Yeah. Yeah. Now what the what, what the system does, it wants us to have this illusion about and get this idea that everybody got hope I can be like them. Mm-hmm. But it's very few only one a few break through at the right. top. Mm-hmm. But what we're looking for is balance and justice and fairness. And, and a good ministry have to call an ace and a and a spade a spade. Right. Yes, ma'am. What comes to my mind is when you said you want to see the minister embracing the president, it points back to the separation of church and state. Yeah. If you had the church and the state working together, we would be further along, but they are equal in a part. Yeah. And until we can bring them together, and the Constitution is made so that they don't come together. Right. And that, and that just gives us more of a challenge and, and a line that is drawn that we've got to find a way to cross to get to the politician to what? start embracing it. Well, let me, let me tell you my opinion about that. I, I think it's impossible. It'll never happen. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you why. That's when God, Jesus came. And think how many years God had been sitting there gave man a chance to operate. On this, on his roof, and all of a sudden Jesus came on the scene, and Jesus said, "Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand." You know why he did that? Because he's calling us away from a failed way of life. And then on the, on his very last journey, on his way out of here, when they had him up uh, before the council, and Pilate was giving Jesus the the, the going over. And this is what really, really changed the direction of my thinking and told me is that the best thing for us to do is to make sure that we get this kingdom thing right with ourselves. And Jesus said this. He says, my kingdom is not a good world. 
He said, if it was so, mm -hmm. I would call for my angels and they'd rip y'all apart. Mm -hmm. In other words, I ain't trying to make it straight. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. tear this thing up and start something new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, what, that's what Jesus said. Yeah. And so, so the, but, but our responsibility, though, to this ungodly structure is to challenge it and try to make it as 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 uh, functional in the in the in the in favor of the masses of people that we possibly can. Yeah. That's what we have to challenge it to do. Yeah. And that's why we have to keep calling people to salvation, yeah. calling people into this to this relationship with Jesus, so they can operate effectively in spite of, yeah. in spite of the way this thing. Is. And that way, we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going. That's, that's, that's how we become that. And that's how we make an impact on the world. We got to call people. We got to live it. That's why it's so important for you guys to live a righteous life. Yeah. Yeah. You, can't, you, can't, you can't be a witness to these people in this community if you, and show the people that there's something different and better if you are so, you know, are like them. Right. Live like them. Got the same values, the same belief. You right. see, the kingdom values, if you want to get a good example of what value you ought to be embracing, this is what I'm going to give you your sign. Start to meditate Mm -hmm. on the 5th, 6th, and 7th chapter of Matthew. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that God's ways are different from the ways of this world. That's mm -hmm. right. His thoughts are different. That's right. Yeah. That's when yeah. Jesus said, the, you know, the elders of the, of the, of the people of, of the old have said, he said, what I say to you mm -hmm. is a different way. Go ahead, Uncle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just, just to add to this, say it differently. Uh, I hear what, 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 what Sister uh, Lucy is saying, mm -hmm. but uh, my position is like, like, you know, I, I don't see how this is going to work. I mean, yeah. the mom is saying it ain't working either, but, but I, I don't, uh, you look at pictures, see how this is going to work. So, you know, folks see God different, folks see God in a perverted way and whatnot. And, and, and I'm going back to uh, uh, Luke 7 21, you know, and that's why I like ministries like this to help us to live the kingdom of God from within. And, mm -hmm. I, and, and our role is to be salt light in the air. Influence there, but when you start having the opposite amount of the folk at the top who are trying to run it, you know, you pushing this idea of God that folk like this might reject. Don't believe, don't agree with it. Hey, every, every form <coughs> of government that man has come up with and is, has, has been a failure. Yes, yes. Now listen to me. Now, it doesn't matter. Here we are in 2014. It does not matter if it's communism, capitalism, socialism. All three are anti-God. All three are run by the same folk. And all three have the same goal. They go about it a little bit different. But the gut control is all about control. And it's, it's about the, the few having, having the power. Think about communism for a minute. Who's at the top? You got a few elite people with power that control them. What about capitalism? It's the, people that, it's the money people. See, capital means money. You see? Same thing. And socialism, the basic fundamental, the same thing. And so here we are. And so God has said to us, now what I want you to embrace, I want you to embrace the kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's what he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and I'll add all these what things to you. See, a lot of us sitting around this, in our community right now, we think we can't make it unless we are, we, we are just sold out to one of these systems. Mm -hmm. so right. mm -hmm. And God said, yes, you can. You've got to learn how to defend. Now, I'll tell you what God will do. God will so fix it so that the system will be paying off to you. Right. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? Right. It's him, so we got to learn how to work with it. So we get out of it. We got to get out of it, extract out of it in a godly kind of way. Right. right. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You think I'm lying? Go down there to ask old Pharaoh. <laughs> when Pharaoh got ready, when, when God got ready to, to move the children, we were, uh, he, Pharaoh had to finance that thing. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? He financed. Get them on out of here. He financed it. Then get them out of here quick. I'm tired of fooling with y'all. You hear me? Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Uh, all the gold and silver and the fine linens and all that kind of stuff. 
them people they with they gave it up willingly because yeah, God man. God had had has struck a blow there. Right. And that's why we got to learn how to live a life depending upon him. And and stop uh begging and just yeah. do what we have to do. Yeah. But now that, now listen to me, that don't mean we got to we got to work. Yeah. God yeah. said if you don't work, you don't eat. Y'all heard that. Y'all heard that y'all something yeah. 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 We got to work. We got to be diligent in right. in, in what we do. You can't say it. It's not about no lazy folk. Right. Uh, resisting evil is not for for the for the weak at heart. Right. No, right. these people mean business. That's right. You get that in front of you and uh, don't line up. They're, 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 you you, need, you gotta have God on your side. Yeah, that's true. Right. Right. Now, this is what I want. Now I'm about to get all into all that. I'm supposed to be into awareness, don't. <laughs> but that is. See, that, that's important though. That, that's important. And I want you guys to understand something in this. If you're going to help this community, we're going, we're going, we, got to, we got to position ourselves so we can help our young people. I told my wife, I, I, got so, I was kind of frustrated last weekend. We can't be so gone. And uh, I had been in some meetings with some people, and I saw how, how that uh, they would, how we all would respond. I'm saying we were responding to our, our life situation. Okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, kind of like almost a defeated kind of attitude. Mm-hmm. And then I go over and I'm in Houston fooling around uh, with some, some of my folks. And nothing any different. And almost everywhere you go is that we black people have sort of like a similar attitude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, it's, and it's, it's not healthy. And, and, and the more I thought about it, I said, well, Gene, we drive back to Houston. I guess we were halfway back. I had been thinking about this, this situation we caught up in. I said, well, Jane, you know what? Yeah, we, I'm, a few years, I'll be, I'll be 70 years old. And uh, I just don't see at the rate we're going. And when you think about the money people, the educated people, and the people in the politics, our political leaders, we have, more, we have more political leaders now than we've ever had in the history of, from our community. We got more money. In the bank, I mean, for a dollar while, not individual. House. We got individual got some got some good money in our community. Mm-hmm. Individual. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, when I was down doing my brother's wedding the other week, uh, he pointed out. You got no, no, again, my brother Mo Howard, the lived in Ohio. Uh, he uh, he pointed out to me a couple of of his millionaire friends. That was in the uh, in all these things. I said, oh, "Okay, mm-hmm. all right." Now, <laughs> and it, think about that, but yeah, yeah. They, 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 but they work hard for it, and it's right? Yeah. So, but we got it's not the fact that we don't have some money. We don't have as much as other ethnic groups, but we got some money. We got more political leaders, and we and we are a degree people. A lot of people got degrees. Mm-hmm. We we got it, yeah. but we got enough to do something with. But the question is, what are we doing with it? Mm-hmm. Are we doing it to elevate our community, and uh, as some of the other groups are doing? Right. Now you take us to the Vietnamese. Mm-hmm. Now my brother's down there. You know, he's a Vietnam veteran. He helped him. He down there, random raving. So he goes over to Southwest Houston, out going toward Spring Branch, out toward Bridgeview. And we just came out of war with Vietnam, right? Yes. And they got a whole Vietnam village over there. <laughs> they got shopping centers. They got banks. They got everything that make a community healthy and thrive. Right. Then, then the question becomes, why, why don't we have it? Why can't we have that? And the, and the thing is, is that they're money people, they're educated people, and their uh, uh, political people are working to build a community around their history, their culture, their values. Mm-hmm. Now that, and then they take that and blend it in with the rest of the community, learn how to engage with the rest of right. the community. Mm-hmm. Right. But somehow or another, we, we can't ever get around to doing that. Right. Well, has that been our mind? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, we are a, it's mine, mine. It's yeah. all about me. Mm-hmm. You, you yeah. got yeah. to go out and embrace each other. And everybody wants to, well, I think everybody. But a lot of us. Not, yeah. Uh, yeah. They, for, However long, they thought Jesse Jackson spoke for us. 
See, th- th- and, and that's not so. Speak for us. No. Yes. He, he's never heard anything that I had to say. And, and what I don't see is the leaders that even other people would recognize. Mm-hmm. They don't do anything this year towards the us factor. It's the me. I'm What's it? me. So I, I, I always like to hear you speak been. on community because if we're going to do something to build a community, we have to do it. We, we can't do it. To somebody yeah. else. It, it's yeah. been on us. And that's and that and that's 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 the point. The point is that we got to change that mindset, right. and we got to start thinking more about us. It got to become a we thing, a right. communal thing. Mm-hmm. That's right. And unfortunately, like Hempster, I just heard a story this week. We got one of our elected officials that we elected to represent us in our community. We got a struggle. We got an issue, and we had to end up in court. Right? Mm-hmm. Guess who represent the other side? Because he's a lawyer. The person that we elected. Mm-hmm. It's some stuff you got to pass over even if you don't agree with. You, got, you, you don't come out and then and here's the bad, here's the sick part of it though. Here's the sick part of it. We're gonna re-elect him. Mm-hmm. Now what we need to do, we need to we need to come up with ideas. We need to say, look, we got needs in our community, we need to work together right. on this. Yeah. If you're not going to be with us and help us with our call, mm-hmm. we're going to exactly. elect yeah. us somebody else yeah. that's going to be yeah. going to stand with us so we can pull ourselves together as a community, get the kind of respect that we need so we can work in a more legitimate way with the broader community. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't forget me wrong, people. You've got to live in America. Right. Mm-hmm. You've got to live with white folks. You've got to live with Hispanics. You've got to live with Asians. You've got to live with Indians. you got to live with all these people. But as long as we're in the condition we're in right here, right now, nobody's going to respect us. Right. Right. You might yeah. well forget it. Yeah. And everybody will come here and make their living on us and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to still be walking around here pedal for miles. That's right. So we're going to have to do the thing. And that's one reason why I believe that, I agree with Ms. Lucy, is that we going to have to get ourselves together. Right. Get our minds decolonized. Mm-hmm. Get our minds resaturated with truth so we can believe that God is at work in us and we can do the thing just like anybody else can do. Right. And it's going to be a long process, uh, uh, but you got to work at it. Right. <clears throat> you guys are going to have to, you parents and grandparents, you're going to have to set those up. Those learn, make turn your home into a learning institution. You got to do it. You got this church has to become a learning institution. We're going to have to, we're going to have to create stuff right here in this church, so people can come, they can grow, they can learn, then they can get out and begin to implement out in the broader community. Right. You got, we, we got to do it. And uh, if we don't, if we don't do that, and then we have nothing to talk about. Right. It's, it's, it's on us. That's yeah. We know enough of our history now that everybody, the, the, the world is not going to hand you life on a platter. You got right. to go get it. Right. Yeah. Matter of fact, I was studying a guy last night, one of the a, a theologians of, of mine that I love, and he said. Freedom is something that's not, I mean, in, in a pragmatic sense, it's not something that's given to you. You got to take it. Mm-hmm. 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 You, sit here, you sit on your knees and pray all you want to. You got to get up after you get through praying and start to march it towards your goal. Go to war. Did you hear what I just said? And and but but fear would would would, would wipe all that out. That's it. And that's why we got to keep building our faith. Y'all, y'all hear me? And so we give God the praise now. Now let me tell, let, let me read this to you. Now we, all this we just been talking about. If you don't have all that, you're going to be in a stressful situation, right? You're going to stress out. And all this stuff here, and I got some chronic anger, frustration, conflict, displaced aggression, internalized racist attitude, chronic sense of dread. Ego, defense, orientation, come from the story of God, relative powerless and fatalism, control of all religions, and we got to get that under control, too. Yes. Uh, y'all got to learn how we have to learn how to get us some money in our pocket and keep it. Yeah, but, yeah. 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 And so we can find out what we need to really spend our money for. Right. Mm-hmm. Then we got to learn how to take our money and invest it so we yes. collectively. Right. So we can turn around and invest our money to things so we can build something for community. Right. Yes. Right. 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 Uh, why can't we be a home? Why can't we set up apartments projects? Why can't we put up a home yeah. store? Yeah. In our yeah. community? Yeah. It takes yeah. money to do that. Yeah. And then if we got money, say we got a few million dollars, and then if we need to go to the bank to get some money, you got some some left. Yeah. You don't want to fool no broke folk. No. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got nothing. 
give it to you. Yeah, here you are. I got your hand. Come on. Mr. Mr. I'm going to get a million dollars. I'm going to get two million. I'm going to get five million dollars for you. What you got? I ain't got nothing right now. I'm gonna get something. <laughs> no, that ain't gonna work. Folk ass fuck the ladder. We ain't got nothing to do. See, I learned it. We built this church. We didn't go to the table flat broke. <laughs> you got the ass out. And uh, we, we had a few thousand dollars in the bank. Right. As a matter of fact, we had, uh, we had a little over hundred thousand dollars, about hundred twenty, hundred fifty thousand dollars. And so I goes down to Chase That's Bank and talk to crazy, Chase Bank. Right and Chase Bank talking crazy with me. I said, well, just give me my money. I <laughs> said, took my money out the bank. I said, no, you know, I don't deal like that. I got some leverage here, too. It ain't all about you. I got some power, too. You see what I'm saying? I said, give me my money. I took my money and went on across town. I went over to Wells Fargo. And within, uh, within three or four days, I took my money and put it in Wells Fargo Bank. And within three or four days, we had a deal. That's right. Well, Fargo, because see, I got leverage and they got leverage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah, that's right. But not only did I have money, but we had property. Right. right. Yeah. Already. And, and yeah. see, if you don't if you don't start thinking, Tanya, you think you don't have anything. Yeah. Right. right. But yeah. you got to you got to come up with your assets and put your assets on the table and tell a man that look, it ain't all about you. I got something to lose too. Right. Yeah. It's still on work. It ain't all about you losing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you come out ahead. Suppose right. I'm gonna build this building down here. Everything I got is into it. If I have to lose, you can get it and resell it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah. You ain't losing yeah, nothing. Right. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's right. So, yeah. so you got to learn how. To, the reason why we we don't do that because we we see ourselves as sort of like second class citizens. Yeah. Yes. I don't buy that. There's two things that I that I that I rejected. I have re totally rejected in life. And I got in trouble with, my, with, the, with, the, with the minister's union because I publicly declared it. And God started looking at me cross-eyed. I explained my situation in detail. And I, I, I made this presentation about being created in the image of God <coughs> and how that the Europeans come in and redesign the thing and set up this whole thing about race, white, red, Brown, yellow, black, put black on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then has set out on a journey yeah. to create and shape everybody in their image. Right. That's, that's what the problem is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then my conclusion to the matter without going any further, my conclusion was is that we as a people, no matter what your you fit to go. Okay. Uh then got to go to a, a major meeting she has to be in this morning. But but the conclusion I came to was simply this, is that we must emphatically reject white supremacy and black as well. There's two things I totally emphatically reject. I reject it, the notion that anybody on this earth is better than me. I reject the notion that I'm better than anybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I told her we need to passionately and I was very emphatic about that. Embrace the notion that we're created in the image and likeness of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now we now a problem behind. Now we can face any man, I don't care who he yeah. is, with respect, mm -hmm. yeah. and with love, mm -hmm. and a sense of equality. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Don we I, I was working with a guy downtown. He's a millionaire. He got a few million dollars. And he worked you know, chairman of the board at the Kremlin, Kremlin Crow at the time. Mm -hmm. And we, we were working on, and so me and him, we had struck up a relationship. And I offended him. So this is where I offended him. One day we was talking. And uh, he said, Charles, what are you going to do about your, your project? I said, well, Don, I'm not ready to move right now. Because when I come to the table to talk to you, and you're going to invest in what I'm doing, I want to come with something in my hand. So we can operate as equal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Boy, that offended yeah. him. Yeah. 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 And so he didn't, but he didn't say nothing. But I could tell him. A year later, we didn't ready to do our project. So I go, you know, you see, I, I, I put my suit on. <laughs> I got my briefcase. I go downtown. Nine call, we've made an appointment. Yeah. I supposed to come to his office and talk to him. Yeah. We're up on about the 50th floor looking out over the city of Dallas. I mean, all that clay glass and all that kind of stuff, you know. And uh, 
And then what he told me? He said, I, I want to invest no money in this project. Mm. Stunned me. Yeah. Because he had emphatically told me that, that when I got ready, he was going to invest uh, at least $50,000 in what I was doing. Yeah. And but when I, because, because I'm coming to him as an equal, he knew I had, I told him I, I, I didn't have it though. I, I told him I didn't have to know it. I told him I need to have at least two hundred fifty thousand dollars before I was willing to sit down and talk to him. So his assumption was when I came to him that I had at least two hundred fifty thousand dollars in my pocket. Yeah. And I felt like I was this little victim was coming out of South Dallas talking about he's equal to me. And he comes yeah. here to talk business with me. He told me he was not going. And 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 uh, and I had and uh, so we then in the in the boardroom around the big boardroom around the table and all that kind of stuff. Then he proceeded to tell me what he wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I said, well, Don, I got a vision, and you got one or two choices. <laughs> you can participate in it on my, on my ground. Uh, we can go our separate ways. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to put anything on it. I said, okay, I shut my brick case up and walked out and got, and got, came on back down. I got on the elevator and came back to South Dallas. <laughs> yes, but if you wanted him to work with you, I had you to work wanted, on his wanted, condition. Yeah, you want to do it on his, his turn. Yeah, and I won't do that. Right. I won't do that, and because right. I, because I, I, I think I think that's what I'm trying to get you guys to see as y'all work right. with me. Yeah, is that we got value too. Yeah, right. and we don't have to combine down because we don't have what they have. Right? Yeah, if we work hard enough and long enough, we'll get it. Yeah, right. and you got to start dreaming like that, big boy. You got to start thinking like that. You got to know that. Maybe we don't get it. Maybe, maybe we're not gonna get everything on the Pastor Charles administration, but the, uh, the future's bright. Right. Maybe under my administration we're gonna get it done. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. Maybe under Brother Andre's um, administration we're gonna get it done. Right. You see? But you got to keep dreaming and keep visualizing, keep seeing the future being bigger, mm -hmm. and don't let don't and don't sell your soul out. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Just to get a few dollars. Yeah. Now Jen and I were sitting out there in North Dallas, and they got they were trying to get me to do some. Some things and uh, and of course I had a vision and I, and I, and I laid it out to people. I needed the money, yes. and the people they say, "Well, we, we and I'm thinking we could work with people, you know, so we need the money." And the guy was telling, he laid out a plan for me. I said, "Well, no, that's not my dream." He said, "Well, Charles, how you gonna get the money to find it? You ain't you ain't got no you ain't got no money." He done said, "We got the pocketbook and had his checkbook laying on the table there. If we got the money, and you just do this, you get the money." I said, man, my soul ain't for sale. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, said, I can't do that. Yeah. I said, I can't sell my people out just to get money. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that's just simply not going to do it. And so he said, well, well I don't know what you, I said, well, I know what I'm going to do. This is what I said on my way out the door. I said, you know, when God called me to preach, he knew what I had. Yeah, sure did. Mm -hmm. I said, now, if you get down to it, to do what I need to do, all I need is this Bible right. and a shade tree. <laughs> if I have to, I go under the tree. And I've done it. Y'all know some of you guys have been around here. Well, I know that we've been under the tree. Yeah. And we had service under the tree because we had nowhere to go. You see what I'm saying? And so I walked out and went on about my business and, and look what God has brought up. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell y'all something. See, you don't know this, Tanya. But this... What we do here in this church, that's when you guys got to get on board with me help me, is a standing testimony to this community of the possibilities. Right. When yeah. the least of God's people would just yeah. stand together. Yeah. Yeah. Who would ever thought people out the project would come to this point? Right. See, so you don't even hear me. No education, no money, no political power, just a bunch of Alien feet just kind of stumbling around. But God pulled us together and we've come to this point. And, and, I, and, and we're responsible for a lot of these houses in this community. We're responsible for that project that's going up right there on South Dallas, right here on, right here on Bath Street. Myself and Pastor Britt, this church, Pastor Britt, and the people across the street there at the Turner, at TR Hoover. We work together to make that happen. But when the big money started coming in, they took the money from us. <laughs> And they put their other folks in. And they're afraid to put the woman in jail down here. And then they come running down here and they had the FBI down there and all that kind of stuff, checking the records and all that kind of stuff. And then come running down here to talk to me. And they asked me, said, but Pastor, we want you to take over this project. I said, what, man, I'm going to tell you something. 
And you got the FBI down. <laughs> and it's messed up. And you want me to take it over? I said, I tell you what you do. When y'all get it straightened out, you come back and talk to me. But now you ain't throwing me in jail behind some stuff. Y'all are messed up. You know what I'm saying? This is always, and plus the fact it divides the community. You got the I will never, 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 uh, these people that we close, we work together on projects. And all of a sudden, they want to push out and put me in charge. I said, no, uh-uh. I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. It's unethical, in my opinion. Now, how this going to look uh, to the people, to the community, and yeah. the community I'm trying to heal, and all of a sudden, I done took the side of the system. Mm -hmm. And see, what people don't understand, and y'all know, and maybe there's been a lot of people out of church not as big as they need to be, my ministry is more on the prophetic side. Mm -hmm. I'm always challenging folks to do mm -hmm. better, to do right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I go downtown to the church, I challenge people to do what's right. And see, it gets looking cross-eyed. I'm not a status quo man. I'm not a system man. I'm about what's right. Mm -hmm. That's just the obvious tool. That's how they get you in trouble. So when we, when we do that, we've got, we got to understand that this, this, is, this is important. If you stop spending all your money on, on stuff, take, take a portion of your money every week and save that money. Think about something that you can do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, right here, this is important. And most of you, you people that have been in a relationship with another man or another woman, you know that one of the problems that we have in our community is the expression of our affection for one another and being able to live together in a loving relationship. That's why our divorce rate is so high. We it keep breaking down on them. And part of that is a societal uh, social thing with so much pressure being put on us. And, and, uh, and if you're not awful careful, what will happen to you is that women, you, you ladies, if you're not awful careful, you'll find that the world will value you more than it values these brothers. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And if, you don't, if you're not careful about that and learn how to understand that, so you won't think you better than your man just because you make more money than he makes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you got you got yeah. problems. Yeah. You got to you got to you got to understand that the whole idea is to keep us divided. Right. And one of the best ways to yes. tap a community <clears throat> is division between a man and his woman. Yeah. You can't get it going. How are you gonna develop the children when mom and dad is raising the thing all the time? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't gonna happen. And so all of this leads to this. Stress. Mm -hmm. So we live stress be a lot. Mm -hmm. So now here we go, I'm going to read it. Most people worry too much about things they can't change or control. Yeah. yeah. This is why strong families and strong communities are necessary. They help insulate individuals to find the world in more realistic terms. Families put the world into context, thereby rendering meaning. Part of the stress problem in the United States is related to incomplete definition a misunderstanding of the purpose of life and an inability to cope the necessity to keep up with the neighbors and live living with lies. <laughs> mm -hmm. To avoid stress, one must examine oneself truthfully and without shortcuts. Y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A single leaves proverb states, a healthy ear can stand hearing sick words. Mm -hmm. Thus the road to health and a stress-free life is to accept is the acceptance of the sickness that revolve around one's own life. This requires a fresh start, a new spirit, and the ability to attack each day while searching for happiness that is not defined by the ownership of people or things. <coughs> That's consistent with our theology. We keep telling, I told this church year in year out that your happiness is not, uh, is not predicated on what you own or don't own. That's right. Or who you know or don't know. That's right. Mm -hmm. It has to come from within. Yes. Yes. That's, right. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He produced love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentle, good, and faith. Okay? Now, now then, then we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to kick this out. We're going to talk about it a little bit, then we're going to be out here and we'll do our, what I was flagging about. Therefore, one must seek truth and base one life on it. Seek truth and base your life on it. If you want to be stress free, you, you, got enough, you got some stuff right here to keep you from being. Overwhelmed by, by unhealthy stress. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff right here can be traced back to a lie that you believe. Yeah. Two, understand one's own culture, history, and tradition. 
we reject what we what what, what we've been what we've offered gave to this world. We, God bought the greatest one, the greatest gift God gave to this world was you. You don't hear that. Okay? Be be family already. Take care of your family, people. Biological family or social family. Every individual needs loving people in his or her life. Change. We will remove bad habits. Now you on you, you got to you got to make that decision yourself about. I, I was uh, studying, a guy said yesterday, he said, righteousness exalts a nation. What tears down a nation then? Unrighteousness. So if you want to correct it, guess what you need to start doing? It ain't that hard. It ain't complicated. You don't have to be a uh, rocket scientist to figure this stuff out. If, if, if righteousness exalts it, then unrighteousness takes it down. So if you want to bring it back up, Turn to righteousness. Right. Now let's take it on individual level. Righteousness will exalt a man mm. or a woman. Unrighteousness is going to bring you down. Yeah. So if you want to get to be, lift your life back up and get back on track, guess what you got to do? Just flip it over yeah. and start to practice what? Right. Righteousness. Yes. Yes. Now you put yourself in a position. You got to at least make a choice to do that, David. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you make a choice to be a righteous man, and then you, put, then you, you invite God into your circumstances. Mm -hmm. And then you can you can win. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Seek life giving and life saving ideal. Not fear failure that one works for success. Don't fear failure. Know that because you fail at something, you're not a failure. Right. You might not get it right this time, but you get it right tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Re redefine success out of one's own needs and realities. Don't don't you build your success on somebody else across town. Yeah, right. Right. Mm -hmm. You got to you got to realize that to be wrong. It's not failure, just a detour in the path of success. Value a simple thing. Value the simple things in life. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have a core value says what? We are committed mm -hmm. to living a simple life, so we we'll have more to share with those who are what? In need. Mm -hmm. Seek independently rather than seek independence rather than dependency. Stop being so dependent upon on on uh, Be productive. Avoid too much television. Be creative. Learn the craft. Pick up ex exercise. Keep the body and mind active. Slow down one's life. Be more selective about the food one eats. Mm -hmm. you no know, God, you know, I, have y'all read that book, Back to Eden? What is it called? Back to Eden. Back to Eden. Back to Eden. 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 Oh, Eden. 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 Okay. Eden. 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 Yeah, back to Eden. You ought to read, you ought to get that. Good for your health. And, and God has a specific diet for us. If we dietary habit. Uh, be more selective about the people with whom one forms friendship. You love everybody, but you can't be friends with everybody. You shall write That's about right. that. Yeah, okay. everybody Seek quality know. rather than quantity. Yeah. yeah. Fence, I'm giving you an example. Uh, I, buy, I buy a good pair of dress shoes. Uh, at least once every ten years. Mm -hmm. I wear them, and uh, matter of fact, the last pair I had one fifteen years. Mm -hmm. I still got them in the closet. I just got tired of wearing them. Yeah, fifteen years they. Now I got them on sale. Quality, it's quality shoe. It was six hundred dollars shoe. I paid two fifty for. Them. Who fit? I at the gallery. Oh, mm -hmm. Somebody said, man, how can you pay that much fast for a pair of shoes? Quality. You know what, Pastor, why you saying that? Yeah. <laughs> I do the same thing. I had a pair of boots. I wore them till I can not wear them no more. Yeah. And then I go give them another good pair of boots. But if you pay $100 years. a year for a pair of shoes in 15 years, look how much you spent. Mm -hmm. You spent $1,500. Yeah. And I paid two fifty dollars for a pair of cotton on sale. I'm, I'm watching all the time to see if the, the best I can get. I paid two fifty. Good leather and all that kind of stuff. They stylish. They're gonna fit. All you gotta do is keep them clean. Polished yeah. up. They're not gonna lose that. Then, then who 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 is the best steward? Yourself. Yeah. I tell you, guys, most of us can't get that. Mm -hmm. We go buy some 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 cheap stuff, and you can't wear it for a time or two, and it fall off of it. Exactly. You go get some quality exactly. that you can use. Like the standard go to the line. this kind right. of. But anyway, cease to use alcohol, drugs, and cigarettes.
That's bad for your health, you know. You can use them going through. I'm not saying this. This ain't no. This is not no uh, heaven to hell thing here. Mm-hmm. But you, you, uh, smoking is just not good for you. Yeah. Uh, alcohol is just not good for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, be drunk just for pleasure only, not just for medicine or something like that because you're sick. That's a whole different ball game. So I remember years ago when I was a boy, I drank whiskey when I was just a little boy. Yeah. But it was in a tonic. Yeah, Grandma yeah. fixed it for me. Yeah. 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 When you got sick, yeah. you got that fever, yeah. Grandma put that put that tonic together, mm-hmm. and you're going to be, you be, you, 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 they're going to have to be you, or you're going to get well. Yeah. When Grandma got to with you. <laughs> you swear to God. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. But see, God never intended for that stuff to be used for pleasure. Mm-hmm. Uh, learn to say no to destruction, attack one on fear, try to see her. Himself versus others. See him. Never blame others for one mistake. Mm. Yeah. Not let anger cloud one's mind. Avoid yeah. harming others unless they seek to harm him or her. Let nothing stop one's search. Always be on the search, looking for answers. Just be open to new new things. Mm-hmm. Life is indeed a path. The Noah knows the right one to take. A stressful life is available to those who are willing to study and seek joy. And less cost and destructive way. Yeah. Okay. In other words, when you when when you when you when you make a decision that you're going to live life in a in a manner that that contradict what God say, and then you you create problems for yourself. You, you're yeah. creating a stress kind of situation. Yeah. For instance, one of the one like like uh, uh I, I said it probably I was I was reviewing some material yesterday, and. One of the reasons why we have so much venereal disease and AIDS and stuff like that is because people are choosing to handle a precious gift that God gave us in a manner not designed the way God told us to use it. Mm-hmm. And for a purpose other than what God told us to use it for. Mm-hmm. You see? And when you start doing that, you start to create all kinds of guilt, shame, mm-hmm. anxiety, mm-hmm. and all these kind of things. So you because you're doing things again. According that that contradict God's design for life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See? Same thing mm-hmm. with with living in a relationship with somebody. Mm-hmm. You got stress in your relationship because I guarantee you can trace it back to something that you're not doing. Somebody, one party or both parties, not doing something, is doing something that contradicts the way God said for it to be done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I ain't no way in the world you, you can be jacked up, have a jacked up relationship when both parties operating the way God told you to do it. Mm-hmm. No way. Yeah. Okay, that, that's, that's out there on the table now. What do you think about that? Now, like I said, I, I, that's, not, that's not one of those absolute things that you can just say, well, if we're going to get deal with it, you know, we're going to have to be pragmatic. You know, we've got to be practical. We've got to do some things that's going to help us. We have to learn how to live life in a practical sense. God is working in us, and God is, God is working in the life experience with people. It's not some kind of abstract idea just hanging out there. We got to add some concreteness to our experience. What the real deal? How does it express itself in our relationship with one another, our relationship with our finances, our relationship with institution life, our family, so forth, so on, right down the line. Yes, yes. There's that image of God again. You back at the But we're getting ready to go past our flight. My I mean, comment is I think our mindset uh, is going to become better because you keep pricking our consciousness and giving us specific things of what we should uh, look at to make ourselves grow into better people yeah. right. versus uh, just, I mean, if you're hearing, hearing, uh, the word of God and God's stories mm-hmm. uh, will, will keep us on track, but we gotta live in the real world today, and we gotta deal with what's really going on with mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. And as you say, buying something that's quality versus quantity, we know women buy ten pairs of shoes, mm-hmm. one of each color, the same style. Right. Mm-hmm. We don't need it. <laughs> but unless somebody says, says Lucy, why don't you buy? I buy the, the bad shoes. Mm-hmm. I buy the, the good shoes. I'm kind of like Catherine. And I, but I've still got shoes sitting in the closet I never wear. I <laughs> never. Yeah. They're, they're just sitting there. Why? Oh, but they were so cheap, I didn't want to leave them in the store. Yeah. But, but now when I go 
in the store, I'm getting better by saying, is that something that you need? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm asking the question. Right. Right. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm just thrilled to that we engage in, in conversation that's going to help us in our daily lives. And, right. and then we're going to become better people further down the road because of it. Does anybody else say anything else that I read off the list that, that you want to respond to? That, that help us, man. Right? Just what this all about. This is the help us so, you can, so we can grow. We need to grow. We just go, go ahead. Okay. Um, when I first heard about the Willie Lynch speech, uh, have you guys ever heard about the Willie Lynch speech? <laughs> anyway, the book is Willie Lynch. Willie Lynch? Yeah, yeah. yeah Willie Willie Lynch. Lynch. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, it, tiny little book about mm -hmm. the split. And uh, he was teaching, uh, they, they were having a problem on the, slave, on the uh, slave plantation controlling rebellion. So he comes up from the West Indies and he is on the uh, banks of the Virginia River. He's telling them how to put up differences between every mm -hmm. every black person, set the dark against the light and the, mm -hmm. the nappy head against the half yeah. white head mm -hmm. and the whole nine. And he said, if you can employ it, and you tell them never to trust each other, only trust white people. That if you can employ this time and time and time again through their lifestyle, your whole lifetime, not only will you control them, you control their children, their children's children, you will control black people three to four years, three to four hundred years in the well, future. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, and we're still, that's part of where all of this is coming from because it came from our lives. Mm -hmm. And it's so internalized, it's almost like a, a silent curse. Mm -hmm. It's very internalized, and even right now, you know. I, I hear people, who would have explained he got such good hair? I'm like, mm -hmm. turning 14. Well, here's what the deal is. Y'all got to get this in mind. The, the thing that the most, in my estimation, in my study of the scripture, the thing that we got to watch more than anything is our mind. Yes. yes. What we allow to go yes. into it. Our belief system controls everything that we do. Yes. yes. That's why that. And, and I know most of you guys don't take it, you're not taking this, probably not as serious as you need to take it. But every Sunday, you notice that we get up and do our core values. Mm -hmm. And that's just a general, that's just a big umbrella. But the, the idea is this we need to have some kind of frame of reference that guides our decision making. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's important. And the first one that we have on there is love God with all of your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Right. It's central to everything else. And then the <laughs> second one we have on there is submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, obey the word of God, mm -hmm. depend on the Holy Spirit, give us the power to do the will of God. Is Then the third one is that we serve and support our fellow man to the best of our ability, the resource that we have. So, yeah. mm -hmm. See, it's all about this. It's all about what you think. Okay. We have a, a value, it might, I think I took it out, but, it, but it's in our, it's on that sheet I gave you Sunday, and the value says this, we're committed to changing our lives by changing what? Uh -huh. Our minds, so that our choices, decisions, and action will be according to the will of God. See now, now you guys don't have no excuse in long. Now, you might be still tied up and tangled up and bogged down, but you, you got a way out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have to stay there. But you're going to have to, you're going to have to do just like, just like Joshua told you. This book of the law mm -hmm. shall not depart out of your mind. Yeah. But you shall meditate in how, when? Day. Day. In order to do what? All oh, that is written in it. Then you will make your way prosperous. Yes. And then you will have what? Yes. Good success. Yes, sir. Yes, in other words, he'll clear out all that stuff. Yeah, that's right. But I'm going to tell you what. It's not going to get cleared out on wishful thinking. That's no. right. That's right. You've got, you to, got to, you to, to go to, to work. You got to do it. You, to do you to better do hear me. It took a lot to get us in this fix that we're in. Yeah. It's going to take some effort to get us out. But here's the good thing about it. It's not going to take you as long to get out of it. Yeah. If you start working on your mind. Exactly. So you, we sit passionately by. Yeah. How old are you, Tony? You said past about 44 years and it's just been dropping one. Hmm. Just dropping one. Yeah. Just dropping one. That's what made, and you are what you are because of what you would saw. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But you can overcome that in a short period of time by being intentional about what you're going to think now, what you're going to allow to go into. Mm -hmm. Now, every morning before I get out of bed, I lay in the bed, I stretch straight out in the bed, just like this. 
when I wake up, and I lay my hands down side like this, and like in a meditate mode, mm -hmm. and I go through my core values. This is what I'm gonna get. What I'm gonna do today? Love God, submit to the Holy uh, Lord, Son of Jesus Christ, serve and support my fellow man, mm -hmm. take responsibility for my growth and development, uh, develop and use my gifts, talents, and skill to, to benefit the people. Seek the kingdom first and follow down the line. Change my life by changing my mind. Live a simple life. Meditate on the word of God. Speak the truth in love. Forgive. Practice forgiveness. Right on down the line. I, and I go through that. And uh, and uh, I might get up uh, 30 minutes later. Because I lay there and reflect a little bit. And then... Uh, Hot water heater might have blown up or something. Now I got. I'm now. I'm. I'm in a better. I'm mm -hmm. in a mood now where I can deal with life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The coffee yeah. might not be ready. Then, mm -hmm. then, I, then I got up and got to bed and put, forgot to put the coffee on. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, cause she normally do that. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't get up fussing. See, because yeah. I, I, I don't, because I, I didn't. I didn't got myself yeah. ready for to move Very out in life. See. Yeah. 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 And then since we started on this, but one other thing I do, I go through this with exercise too. Before I even get out the bed, I let go of anger. Because mm -hmm. sometimes I dream about stuff make me mad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, go ahead, Andre. I, I just want to respond to what you said about what you said about the people were internalized. And the older I get, more I, I'm more attention to myself. And I'm better to myself. That's, that's just what it is. Like you said, it's not going to happen. Uh, it's not going to happen. Yeah, you're gonna you gonna have obstacles, you're gonna have things that you can but you know with God's help you're gonna rise above it. Yeah. You know that, you know that. Yeah. You know Amen. and uh now I was thinking yesterday about this whole thing about matter of fact I woke up with it on my mind this morning. I said to myself, I said, you know, it is you don't you have no right other than the fact of God and adventure being where you are in life. Yeah. Yeah. You have no other no other that uh, all the forces that you've had to deal with over the years. Limited resources and all that, and you're still moving on. So it has to be. And so what's, what is the one thing that I made a decision that I'm going to do, and I, I don't get it right all the time. I made a decision years ago that I'm going to do everything in my power to do what I like. Now, I get it right some, most, like quite a few times. And all I get, I think I get it right a little bit more. But my, but my heart, I believe, is in the right place. Yeah, I, I might not get it right all the time in a very practical way, right, right. but my heart is in the right place. Right. I want to do the right thing, That's it. That's and I'm willing it. to make changes in my life yeah. when I do blow it. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yes. To get up the correct so I can get on by living life. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I believe God honors that. I believe I God believe. honors the fact that a person is desired to be a righteous person, yeah. to be like him. I believe God honors that, and God intervenes in your life, God opens doors. I think I think God has dropped a dozen things for me that I know that I just I just amaze me sometimes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Hmm? Yeah. And and I'm gonna tell you the truth. When I was at my when, when I was at my wit's end, uh, and I'm gonna finish with this. My my I literally believe that that uh Gene was either 
dead, I was dying. Mm -hmm. And I saw my own eyeball. And uh, and I cried out to God. I stood over and cried to God. And he gave her back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This reason why I, 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 sometimes I get in my back, yeah, when I see some hard times, I think about, I count my blessings. Yes, 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 and I name them one by one. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. See, you don't hear me, man. This thing is real. God is real as this is real as that. He's, he's more real than these glasses I'm holding in my hand. Yeah. 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 And you see that, don't you? Yeah. God is more real. Yeah. I'm talking about what I know. Yeah. yeah. My wife was so sick one night. And boy, I mean, she was sick. And she just couldn't. Have. And I said, I don't know what to do. I just got, I got out to bed. And I put my hand on her head like that. And I prayed for her. Mm -hmm. And in a few minutes, boy, she went off to sleep. Dressed like a lamb. That's correct. You know, I'm sitting watching her, I'm watching her. You know, you all know when Jean went through all that trouble with her And uh, boy, she was sick. Yeah. Yes, and I just knew I had lost her one night. Like, I, I heard her. I was asleep two o'clock in the morning. I heard her when she fell. Bam! In the bathroom. I heard her when she fell. Bam! Hit the floor. And I jumped out of the bed. There she was laying in the middle of the floor. And I rolled back in her head. Don't, I think the only reason that she's here, God gave her back. God, God just let her bear her life and gave her a few more years. To live. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. God knows your heart. And that's the reason why when, 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 uh, when the money run out around here, I just keep flying here. Because I know God, he'll, 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 make, he'll make a way. I just keep going, doing what I, what he, what he, my pastor, I, when I got, when I, when I was at the back of, at the end of myself in this ministry, and it got really tough. And, uh, Boy, I didn't, I might, and it, it was, it was, it was, it was tough. Uh, people was acting crazy and no resources and all that kind of stuff. I called my pastor in Houston. I said, Pastor, I'm coming home. He said, No, you're not coming here. <laughs> <laughs> he told me that. He said, You're not, he said, you're not coming here. He said, No. He said, No, you can't, you can't come back here. He said, He said, Then he started laughing, man. He said, I know you're frustrated. I know you're having a hard time. I, 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 I'm, I was bending, all my crazy stuff going on. All I was just bending, talking loud, and acting crazy, you know, and crying and stuff. I was just hurt. Yeah. And he laughed. At me. You know what you're doing. Then he said, he, then he says, uh, he said, Charles, let me ask you a question. He said, who sent you to Dallas? <laughs> he said, who sent you? I said, God. <laughs> He said, who told you to leave? <laughs> he said, tell you what I'm going to do. For. I'm going to pray for you. And you're going back down and go to work. But then if you leave there, don't come here. And so I did. And, and, uh, and that very moment, that same day, God started restructuring again our whole situation. Yeah. The same day, started restructuring things. I had a house I couldn't pay for at that time. I went to the guy. I said, man, I can't pay for this house. I went back to the market. I said, I can't pay for this house, man. He said, man, he said, Mr. Charles, you ain't never missed a pay. I said, but I can't pay for it. I'm, I'm broke. I'm flat broke. I'm bankrupt. He said, you're a good man. He said, I'll buy it back from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't want to mess up the credit. Hey, the thing you, right you right went about to do. <laughs> And that's when I bought that house down there on South Boulevard. And it was, it was I mean, it was, it was messed up. But we rebuilt it and turned it mm -hmm. into an oasis. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. So you don't hear me. And God gave us a vision for that. We rebuilt that whole thing and then started a movement in that community, clean up that community. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But God can do those kind of things. I know I know what I'm talking about. I've seen his hand in this thing. And I, said, and, and I say all that to you guys. You guys going to have to rise up. And I'm better. Take this thing, own it, and knowing that I'm not going to be around here many more years. Uh, and then you got to just keep going forward. Because this community needs a minister of this nature. And you got to do even better than, than, than I've done. You got to do better. You can't just 
to rest on what Pastor Charles has done, you got to do even greater work. Yes. Am I right or wrong? You're right, right. Pastor. You got to do greater work. You got to dream. You got to be. You got to love these people in this community. And I'm going to show you how to do it here come uh, March. And we're going to set a, new, a, a whole new standard. We're going to we move to a, a new standard. And uh, we're going to take this community by storm. And, we, and we're not going to ask people to come. We're going to get the people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going out there and put our hands on them. And, and uh, we're going to, as a matter of fact, we're going to start now. Because my words to get that in your head. And you're going to start walking past people and not seeing them. Right, right, yeah. All over this community, when you see people, you got to recognize them. I don't care if they do got their hands hanging down. Yeah, yeah. If, they, if, you, we, we re, if we rehumanize them, they'll pull them britches up. Yeah. And you ain't got to tell them to pull them up either. That's right. They just got to be humanized. Yeah, And don't that they drinking and smoking and cussing. I heard, one day I was sitting in my office. I thought the guy was talking to me, man. He walking down by, he was cussing and cussing to my own telephone, you know. He, he, I was sitting in my office, he was walking down the street there. So I go look out the door. And he, but the point is, is that, that right now, that's not, for I'm concerned, between me and him, that's not an issue. Right. Yeah. yeah. That he want, that's, that, that he got to deal with his own country. I know he's a miserable man to do that. Mm -hmm. So my thing is to bring the peace of God and the love of God into the contact, and so he can get some kind of Contact with that, you know. Now they, let you walk in and get that contact with that marijuana. Y'all know how you do that when you walk in there. Somebody smoking that marijuana, you get you a little contact when you walk yeah. in. Somebody need to get a contact when they walk in with us. Yeah, yeah. Am yeah. I right or wrong? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Father, thank you today for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your people. Thank you for their desire to be more conscious and aware. Right thing. We want to be proud of people. We want to do just what you told us to do. We want to be a people that love our enemies mm -hmm. and bless those who curse us. Yes. And good to those who hate us. Mm -hmm. And pray for those who despise and use us. Mm -hmm. We want to be your choice. Yes. We want to, to manifest not only in this church, but in our homes, in our community, and in the world which you placed us in. Now we acknowledge that we need to get food. Yes. We have inundated with a lot of false beliefs. And we pray now that by your grace and by your spirit mm -hmm. that you would just liberate our minds. Let us yes. help us to see from your perspective. Yes. 